Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House. On this day, February 10th, the year of our Lord, 2016, my spirit is broken because this day will live in Rhode Island infamy to borrow a clause from a president of ours. On this day, it seems to me like we can't really call ourselves a representative republic because I thought a representative republic is representative of the people. This thing seems to me like we're representing special interest, not the interest of the constituents that we serve that put us here. Did anybody listen to the people? Am I the only one that got a thousand to one uh, against versus four? I can't be the only one. Numbers don't lie. Is anybody listening to the businesses? We had Mr. Perlman was crying his heart out telling us every, how impactful this was going to be. We had a committee process. Your point of order, Leader. Mr. Speaker, could he uh, refrain his remarks to the amendment itself and not the bill? I I'm building up to that. Well, please. Because we do represent businesses as well as people. So, and a lot of my people are business people. So I, I think it has everything to do with, with the bill and the amendment. Uh, but anyway, there were businesses that were asking questions, and we had to cut them off. We couldn't follow up with any other questions. We ended up that committee. Rep representative, at this point, the leader is correct. Could you constrain yourself to the amendment before us? You'll have plenty of time later to bring up other issues on the bill itself. Okay, so we wanted to get a lot of questions answered as this pertains to the impact on our businesses. The central nervous system of any economy is our businesses. And it's not only the trucking industry that happens to be using trucks. Everybody uses trucks. My company uses trucks. You know, it's got nothing to do with that. It's that we just didn't, we didn't do enough to help our own businesses. You know, that's our family. You know, we're letting, we're hanging them out to dry. And I just don't think it's right. So I would say we should definitely support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House. Just consider the scope of this thing. You know, a little tiny state that we are, to have 14 tolling gantries. You know, to take a, to take a line from the governor, we, uh, are, you, are you on the amendment? Yes, yes. Um, All right. So Tie it together, as a please. trucker, as a trucker, you have to think, my God, a little tiny state like Rhode Island, probably about a thousand square feet, give or take, to have 14 tolling, that's about, uh, sorry, square miles. I don't miles. think you're on the amendment, Representative. We're going to be here long tonight. I'll give you all the so, time to speak, but please, we're on the credits of the amendment. So when the truck, when the truckers are considering being in Rhode Island and there's 14 tolling gantries in this little tiny state, it has to impact them. And, you know, the other day I was listening to my constituent on the radio, Gene Valicenti, when you were on, Mr. Speaker, and the, the governor was on. And prior to you being on, they had Mr. Perlman from Ocean State Job Lot. So Gene was trying to ask the governor all these questions about what the, the points that, that Mr. Perlman brought up. And I thought the way she answered the question was no different than a mother would tell a little kid that, hey, you've got to eat those peas. So that, that's not the way to treat any business in our state. Mr. Speaker, could we please ask the, the proponents of the arguments to keep it to the amendment, please? You have not said one word on the amendment, and you're one and a half minutes into your discussion. And I'm interested in hearing everything you have to say, but you get five minutes twice on the bill. You're on the bill. We're going to be here till 3 in the morning, and it's going to be a disservice to everybody in this room and everybody watching. So, so please, when we're on amendments, because I expect we're going to get... A lot of folks on each amendment just stay to the amendment and then we'll get on the bill when we're done with the amendments. You're on the bill right now, Representative. Proceed on the amendment. So with, with all due respect, that, that's exactly what I'm the point that I'm making is that we just have the, the gantries per square mile. It's really hurtful to our businesses and I think we really should be taking better care of our businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also rise in, in support of this legislation. You know, I may disagree with my colleague about 12 too many. I think it's 14 too many at this point. But uh, with that said, 14 is a lot of tolling gantries. And we're leaving this at the discretion of one person who is appointed, not even elected. 
And, you know, there's a lot of holes in this bill. I mean, I, I like to think about it as the Swiss cheese bill because there's a lot of holes in there. And this one right here would be one that might cover up one of those holes. So there's going to be a shortfall with the 14 gantries. And do we really want them to just be able to quickly add 15, 16, 20, or whatever? It seems to me like the goal is just to get, just to get the, the approval for the tolls, and then we'll figure out how to get more when the time comes. Now, to quote, you know, my father, one of the smartest, toughest guys I've ever known, he always told my brothers and me when we were growing up that there was a, a family, the guy was very wealthy, and he had children, and he said that he was going to give all of his inheritance to the richest child. And I said, well, why would that make any sense? And he said, because if you have all the money, you know how to use it. If you're a squanderer, you're going to squander it. So we're going to give total authority to an agency that's been squandering our hard-earned tax dollars for decades. I think this is a great amendment. Thank you. Representative Giarusso. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I know we heard a lot tonight, but I don't know how many of you got a phone call like I got last night. But I had a woman, I never met her before, but she called me, she got the number from the legislative website. And she was literally in tears. And no, she's not a truck driver, as some people may think, but she just thought that we're just heading down a slippery slope. She said that you know, this is going to be really hurtful to our businesses, our taxpayers, and, and I can't disagree with her. You know, I got n numerous emails, letters, phone calls. But, you know, it, it brings me to another point. East Bay reps, you know who you are. How dare you support this bill? How dare you? We fought tooth and nail to get the tolls off the Sakonet River Bridge. Talk on the merits of the bill. Don't chastise any other members and don't tell other members what to do. Speak on the merits of the bill because everyone has a different opinion. I've heard from a lot of constituents that absolutely said go forward with this. So everybody has a different opinion. I've suggested that earlier. You don't monopolize folks' opinion, and you can't chastise our colleagues. So proceed on the merits of the bill, Representative. Thank you. If I was chastising, then I apologize. I was just trying to make a point that we do stuff in here that when your pinky hurts, your whole body hurts. I've never crossed that bridge maybe twice in my life. I hated it because they're Rhode Islanders over there. I thought it was punishing them. So now for us to be contemplating this, we're putting bills up, we're going to be putting tolls, and we're not just going to be attacking the hard-working taxpayers of the East Bay, we're getting everybody. So I just don't think it's right. We fought that hard, and now to be doing this, it's just another thing. But there's a lot of people that are voting with their feet. And if in case you haven't heard that before, they're leaving. And, I, and all of us know people that are leaving, they just can't take it anymore, the climate. And there's the, a telling story that one of my former constituents said that he left, he and his wife and his children, they left. And I said, what are you leaving for? Is it really that bad? And he said, I wanted to leave here while somebody is still able to buy my house. That is a mouthful, and that really hurts. And I just want to close with this. We're really, we're really putting the screws to people. And I think someday we're going to see a sign, a big billboard on 95 that's going to say, the last person to leave Rhode Island, please turn the lights off. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, if, if we're so sure that, that we're not going to, that we'll never, that this body, whether it's us or our great-grandchildren, is never going to do this and they're going to let the people vote on it, then what's the big deal in just putting it in the Constitution? Wouldn't it have been very convenient if we would have put the lottery revenues in the Constitution that that goes to education? Wouldn't it have been really, really good if we had put that 2 percent income tax in the Constitution that bail us out of the DEPCO? No. So someday, someday, we're going to be having the same conversation. You know what? We need more money. I think we should just legislate that little line out of there that wrote a referendums and things like that. Let's just do it now. We can just, we'll just take that pill, we'll swallow it now, and by the time the no November election comes, the people won't even remember we did it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the leader 
Um, yield to a quick question. Leader De Simone, will you yield to a question? He will. It is on page 9, line 29, where it says competitive negotiation. I'm just wondering, with the uh, Administrative Procedures Act, they advocate for competitive sealed bidding. Do you know why it was not done this way or what the difference is? Well, uh, what, through the competitive negotiation, this will give us some flexibility, but more importantly, it will give us an opportunity to save money. So we're not under the Administrative Procedures Act. This is something that will give us the opportunity to try and work out the best type of agreements that we can. So it's an effort to save money. So is the, is the competitive seal bidding, is that usually more voter-friendly, taxpayer-friendly, transparent? Well, I, you said a couple of things there, <laughs> but I, I would, my response to you is that, hold on one second. So um, what I would say to you, Representative Giarusso, is the language allows them to use that, uh, that type of uh, competitive bidding. It's permissive. It's not mandatory. It's permissive, but it's already in the law. So um, I think the, whether it's transparent, I think ultimately all the contracts will be public and therefore will be transparent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Clerk, unlock the machine. All in favor, please vote green. Those opposed, red. Clerk, lock the machine. 52 in favor, 21 opposed. The act prevails. <laughs>